Prayer and fasting are often coupled together in the New Testament. Acts 13.3 And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Acts 14.23 Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church, and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. Acts 13.2 as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. In Luke 2.37, a widow worshipped day and night, fasting and praying. In Mark 9.29, Jesus answered the disciples, according to the King James rendering of the text, that the demons that they were unable to cast out comes out only through prayer and fasting. We must try to get back to the place when we value prayer as an integral part of our fast. Life is lived at such a pace today that we often don't find the time to fast and pray. Prayer opens up our soul in communication with God and allows the Holy Spirit to resound praise and petition in our hearts towards our Father who is in heaven. Matthew 6, 17 through 18 and a few other things in the body. As a result, I have even personally known people who have seen their doctors before fasting, and I would advise doing so also. There is a lot of material out there that can tell you great ways to prepare your body for fasting, what foods to eat, what foods to avoid, and so on. Next, you need to prepare yourself spiritually. Isaiah 58 is a revolutionary passage on fasting. Verse 3 through 4 calls us to check our inner man when we fast. Yet, on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. There are certain attitudes and behaviors that spring from our spirits that are not acceptable when we fast. In the same way, we must leave our gifts at the altar and pursue the right relation with others before we worship. We must do the same before we fast. Our spirits must be right. Fasting is not about humbling the body and its appetite. It is about humbling the soul and the spirit. Here are things we should do to prepare spiritually before we fast. Confession helps to center the spirit and to remove guilt. And 1 John 1, 9 tells us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I mentioned this before, but I want to highlight it once more. Make it right with those who did us wrong and vice versa. There are several verses that back this statement up. Mark 11:25 states, And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Luke 11:4 states, Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. Luke 17, 3, To offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And then to the most important part, praying in the spirit and meditation. We must always come back to the heart of fasting, which is a heart that is intentionally placed before God. Prayer is not just an occasion, but it is a position of conversation with God. The lines of communication must be kept open. If we are going to get the breakthrough we are fasting about, abstaining from food is not enough. Your breakthrough comes at this point. Like Christ told the disciples, I am telling you, you need to fast and pray. In 1 Thessalonians 5.17, Paul told the church in Thessalonica to pray continually. These are some factors that must bolster our faith gets. And then at this moment, we must exercise our faith in accordance with Hebrews 11.6. 
If we do everything that is listed up, but we do not put our faith in God, it is futile and displeasing to God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. There is a mighty breakthrough that is awarded to the person who comes before God with clear and sober minds, clearly determined petitions, physically and spiritually prepared to take on the task of fasting. All of that must be wrapped up and sealed in faith. If you have no faith, you have no breakthrough. If you have a little faith, you have a little breakthrough. If you have big faith, you have a big breakthrough. All of God's response is a response to our faith, to faith. According to your faith, be it unto you. All you need is the faith of a mustard seed. It does not take great faith to believe in a God that never fails. I wish I could tell this to each of you individually, that God is faithful. He has never failed. Failure is not in his nature, and he will not fail you. The God of this Bible is still Jehovah Jireh. This book clearly states he will make you the head and not the tail. He will make you above and not beneath. He will give you vineyards you didn't plant and wells you did not dig. He plants you by streams of living waters so that whatever you do shall prosper. Only believe in the God of this Bible there is nothing more powerful than your faith. Yes, you have been praying, but do you have faith? Yes, you have been fasting, but do you believe? Real faith can grab God's attention in heaven and move him into action on your situation. Mark 5, 36, do not be afraid, just believe. God has not left you. God is with you. You are going to make it. When you think you can't take another step, when you think you can't live another day, when you think you can't take another disappointment, reach out in faith to the God that winds and waves obey. He holds the seven seas in the palm of his hand. He calls the stars by name. He measures the heavens with the span of his hand. He is the rock of your salvation. He is the cornerstone, precious, and elect in Zion. He is my shelter in the storm. He is my high tower, my fortress, and my deliverer in my time of battle. For you to have faith in God, you will need to fight through some things. You will need to fight doubt. You will need to fight through any insecurities, fight through all unbelief, fight through past defeats, 